All right, ninth grade, let's get started with today's lesson. So today we're going to be talking about what you see on the screen here, electric fields. And so yesterday we were talking about electrostatics and how we see electrostatics and what electrostatics do. We're going more of that, but we're also taking it from the idea of electric fields today. So right here, we got our first note. And make sure you're writing this down so you can show me today I want to see your notes today it says the region around a charged object in which other objects are attracted or repelled by an electric force is called an electric field and so all around charged objects there is a force or a space of influence and that space of influence right there is called our electric field and so if an object is anywhere in that electric field it is likely to either be attracted to it or repelled based on its charge or if it has no charge at all it will remain neutral it won't really do anything right here the field can actually be mapped out with imaginary lines known as the lines of force and so even though you could not see these lines of force if you were to take a microscope all the way down a microscopic level you still could not see the lines of force they are very useful for making diagrams and so like we can see here we have our electric fields on top and so the blue represents a positive charge and the orange represents a negative charge and you can see the lines of force and how they come together when it comes to the unlike charges and so unlike charges attract when two charges are not the same they will attract but when you look over and you see the like charges when you have two positives next to each other they will actually repel each other and it's very similar to the idea of magnets if you take the north pole of two magnets and you try to push those two things together it's very difficult and it actually gets more difficult the closer the two get to each other and we're going to talk more about how that applies to electricity very similarly but those lines that are coming out of these charged particles here those are the lines of force. So let's keep on going. We get to talk about measuring charge. Well, how do we measure a charge? How do we know one charge is stronger than another one? And we get into this here. The more electrons an object loses or gains, that will strengthen its charge. And so if it is a negative object, if you add more electrons, if it's negatively charged, it will become even stronger. However, if it's positively charged, if you add more electrons you're making it more neutral and so you want to be sure of that so if you wanted to strengthen a positive charge you would actually take electrons away from that object or that element now the SI unit for electric charge is called the Coulomb and we represented it with this capital C now this is named after a person that we're gonna get into a little bit later but for right now what you need to know is that it is the coulomb and that is how we measure our electrical charge one coulomb of negative charge is equal to six point two four quintillion electrons that's a whole lot of electrons and so if you have one coulomb that's a whole lot of stuff going on there that's just how much it takes but we talk about negative charge. It works for positive charge as well. Coulombs also work for positive charges, and it's basically a very similar deal when it comes to protons in that sense. There we go. Now, moving on to our next slide here, we can see some electrostatic laws. And one of the ones that we know is been repeated a couple times in this lesson but it's still very important is unlike charges attract each other and so if you were to just hang both of these objects they would attract each other so much that they would force each other to come together however if you had to do the same thing and just hang them on like a pole or something like that with two negatively well two positively charged objects right here once they're the same charge they'll actually push each other away and they will try their hardest to make sure that they will never touch so it's very similar in this case 
to what you guys know about already when it comes to magnets. Electricity and magnetism are actually very closely related, which we'll get into more a little later on. Now, here are some other electrostatic laws. If two plates of opposite charge are close together, they form what we call a uniform field. This means that the strength of the field is equal throughout. And so you'll actually see a diagram popping up, up on the screen. And you can see that they are straight lines. They're evenly spaced. And that's what we call a uniform field. And so that uniform field idea is very, very important when it comes to charges. It just seems to line itself up naturally that way. And the thing is, you can't see this once again. Like, you can't see it with your eye, but we can map it out. And it's really, really cool to see how that works. Now, when it comes to our law of electric force, if two objects have strong charges, their attraction or repulsion is strong. If two, if they have weak charges, their attraction or repulsion is weak. And this makes sense. The more charge the object has, the more ability it has, in this sense, to actually attract another object to it or push another object strongly away from it. Also, a big thing to know is that as the distance between the two objects increases, the force decreases rapidly. And so the further away the two objects get, the less the attraction or repulsion is. And it's very, very, very quick to see. Just like if you had two magnets and you tried to push the two pole, north poles together, the closer that you get to actually doing it, the stronger the push is to make sure it doesn't happen. So, especially with stronger magnets, they won't even come within inches of each other, which is pretty crazy. Or, if you have a really strong powered, like, positive field, a negative object from even across the room could be attracted to it. And it will speed up as it gets closer to the actual object. Now, this was discovered by Charles D. Coulomb. And that's why we call it Coulombs when we're talking about our unit for electric charge. It's named after this guy here. And this is actually one of his... Well, it's the representation of the law of electric force. And so he had this here. This is a good formula for you guys to write down. Now, uh, one thing to note that I saw that might confuse some people, get my pointer out here, is that these are not nines. They're actually Qs. And so this is F equals, or force equals, right here, Coulomb's constant. And Coulomb's constant is 8 point nine nine times ten to the ninth power and then this here like it says here is particle charge and this here is distance and so the closer the two objects get the more like the less the distance is the bigger the number is and so you can get a lot of really strong force when the two objects are close to each other Let's keep on moving here. Now it says the law of electric force. Coulomb used a torsion or torsion balance to discover this law. And we're going to see a picture of one right now. So this is very similar to the one that he had here. Basically what would happen is he's got a line here or a fiber of that sort. And he has this little plunger. Now this could be either positively or negatively charged and you can measure and you can actually see how it moves based on what's going on. I can actually show you a little image of that right now. Let me just escape to my desktop real quick. Here we go. It should pop up in a second. Just waiting here for... All right. Let's see if I can make it full screen. Let's start it back from the beginning. So this has a charge to it, and it's going to affect the other thing that's in here. That's also charged.
Now you can tell these two are opposite charges because instead of being repulsed, it actually is attracted to what we see here. As it loses charge, you can see it goes away from it. And so that was basically what I wanted to show you. And that's how he discovered these things after doing multiple different research studies and things like that, he was able to find that out. Now from there, he got his constant and he became famous for doing this. Oh man, FLC for you. Anyway, next we have just some other basic diagrams of what we were talking about all this class period. Notice, force directly proportional to charge strength. And so the more charge something is, the more the force is. And then finally, force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. And so the further away an object is, the less force it produces. Now I want you guys to go to your Google Classroom and this will be your last assignment for this week. And what I want you to do is I want you to take all the notes that you took from today's video and I want you to email them to me. So you guys should have been taking notes during the video. So I want you to email them to me and show me what you did. If you write them out on a piece of paper, take a picture of it and send it to me. If you have it in a Google Doc already, just send that over to me so I can look at it and I can give you a grade. Thank you very much for listening all the way through. I hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye.